Hello everyone, so today I'm talking about François Grosjean. To me, anyone that is interested in bilingualism should read at least one thing from François Grosjean. I'm not going to do a full biography in this video because I don't want it to be too long, but essentially Grosjean is famous for his work and contribution in bilingual language acquisition, which is a branch of linguistics. While he's done a lot of academic research which might not be accessible for many people, he has also published work which is more approachable and more appropriate to a wider audience which might not actually know about linguistics or bilingualism in an academic sort of level. What's most compelling about Grosjean's view on bilingualism is how human and realistic it is. He addresses the complexity of bilingualism by actually using real-life examples of how actual bilinguals do communicate as opposed to looking at bilingualism as some sort of theoretical concept only. The aim of the video is first of all to give you a reference if you're interested in learning more about bilingualism, but it is also a sort of tribute to Grosjean because I'm a huge fan. I've never written an essay on bilingualism without mentioning his work in one way or another, and that's why I'm extremely happy to do this video today. As you can imagine, I won't be able to explain all of the theories Grosjean has developed or come up with. Instead, I want to give you an overview of a couple of concepts that are, in my opinion, very important in Grosjean's research. So let's start with the first thing, which is Grosjean's definition of bilingualism. So his definition, and I will quote, is bilinguals are those who use two or more languages or dialects in their everyday lives. Grosjean's definition of bilingualism is quite far from the typical definition of bilingualism that you can hear sometimes, which is that a bilingual is someone that speaks two languages perfectly and without any accent, which to be honest is very old fashioned. Grosjean instead believes that most bilinguals don't actually have perfect command of their two languages or dialects. And this inclusive definition of bilingualism is important because otherwise you would find yourself in situations where you have monolinguals and then on the other hand you would have perfect bilinguals and billions of people people in between which would be left without a label. And the reason why people still stand by this old-fashioned definition of bilingualism as being perfect command of two languages is because of what Grosjean refers to as the monolingual view of bilingualism. This means that traditionally language skills of bilinguals were compared to that of monolinguals, even though the linguistic experience is completely different in both cases. One of the main differences between the two groups, so monolingual on the one hand and bilingual on the other hand, is that bilinguals need to be as bilingual as they need to be. And this is why a large majority of bilinguals have different levels of fluency in their two or more languages. So for example, you have bilinguals that are not able to read in one of their languages, or maybe they're not able to write in one of them. Or maybe they might lack the vocabulary to function in certain situations. So imagine someone that is quite able to talk about politics in English, they might not be able to talk about politics in their other language because they've never had to, they're never learned to. And this is precisely why bilinguals develop their two or more languages differently, for different purposes and in different domains of life. This is what Grosjean refers to as the complementary principle. This is why in most cases it doesn't make sense for a bilingual to be equally proficient in their two or more languages because they just don't need to, and sometimes one language only can do the job. Another important principle from Grosjean is the language mode. And the concept of language mode can be explained as follows. Bilingualism is a spectrum, and at the end of the spectrum you have monolingual mode and you have bilingual mode. When the bilingual person is in the bilingual mode, he or she can decide to speak with their two languages if um, the speaker shares the same two languages. This implies that the two languages are activated and can be used in conversation. On the monolingual end, the bilingual will use only one language because the speaker or the person they're talking to only understands one language. It wouldn't make sense for the bilingual to speak two languages in that case because otherwise the message will not get across. The reason why bilingualism should be seen as a spectrum is because it's not clear-cut and language is very fluid. This means that depending on the situation, the context or the topic of conversation, the bilingual will find themselves anywhere along the spectrum. And what I find important about what Grosjean said about this language mode concept is that bilinguals, they will have to ask themselves two questions. The first one is which language should I speak, you know, to that person in that particular context? And the second question is can I use more than one language in that context? Another way in which the language mode concept is very helpful is because it accounts for code switching, so people mixing their two languages in speech. That means that in monolingual speech, normally a bilingual will not, you know, code mix or code switch, but in bilingual situations you will find that 
code switching is very common. Code switching is a big, big topic which would require its own video, which I'm considering to do at some point. And the last point I wanted to develop in this video is language myths, which Crojean spends a lot of time trying to debunk. For example, and I will read my notes, um, he defends the idea that bilingualism is a norm and it's not actually an exception nowadays, meaning that most of the world is actually bilingual. But it's the monolingual view of bilingualism that has led people to believe that bilingualism was the exception. And drawing from the monolingual view of bilingualism, this has created a lot of negative feelings towards bilingualisms from bilinguals themselves because they would feel like they were not competent enough to call themselves bilingual. And I'm sure a lot of bilinguals out there can relate to that type of thinking. I know I definitely did. And finally, and this one is not strictly speaking a myth, he also defends the idea that bilingualism should be studied as such and not studied through the eyes of monolingualism because it's just not truthful to the actual bilinguals communicative experience. So that's it for this video. I hope you found this topic as interesting as I did making this video about this topic. And if you would like to know more, I will put a few links in the description box below so you can check them out. And there will be a couple of websites if you want to know more about Grosjean and his work. So that's it. I will see you next week and bye.